The Lord is the strength of his people, a saving refuge for the one he has anointed. Save your people, Lord, and bless your heritage, and govern them forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Welcome as we come once again to celebrate these sacred mysteries, to hear the word of the Lord, and even though it is only spiritually, to welcome his presence into our homes, into our lives. As we prepare for this celebration today, we first call to mind our own sins and faults and failings. We ask the Lord for his mercy. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name. For those, for you never deprive of your guidance, those you set firm on the foundation of your love. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of the Kings. In the ninth year of Zedekiah's reign, in the tenth month, on the tenth day of the month, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came with his whole army to attack Jerusalem. He pitched camp in front of the city and threw up earthworks round it. The city lay under siege till the eleventh year of King Zedekiah, in the fourth month, on the ninth day of the month, when famine was raging throughout the city and there was no food for the populace. A breach was made in the city wall. At once the king made his escape under cover of dark with all the fighting men by way of the gate between the two walls, which is near the king's garden. The Chaldeans had surrounded the city and made his way towards the Arabah. The Chaldean troops pursued the king and caught up with him in the plains of Jericho, where all his troops deserted. The Chaldeans captured the king and took him to the king of Babylon at Riblah, who passed sentence on him. He had the sons of Zedekiah slaughtered before his eyes, then put out Zedekiah's eyes and, loading him with chains, carried him off to Babylon. In the fifth month, on the seventh day of the month, it was in the nineteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, Nebuzaradan, commander of the guard, an officer of the king of Babylon, entered Jerusalem. He burnt down the temple of the Lord, the royal palace, and all the houses in Jerusalem. The Chaldean troops who accompanied the commander of the guard demolished the walls surrounding Jerusalem. Nebuzaradan, commander of the guard, deported the remainder of the population left behind in the city, the deserters who had gone over to the king of Babylon, and the rest of the common people. The commander of the guard left some of the humbler country people as vineyard workers and ploughmen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O oh, let my tongue cleave to my mouth if I remember you not. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat and wept, remembering Zion, on the poplars that grew there, we hung up our harps. O oh, let my tongue cleave to my mouth, if I remember you not. For it was there that they asked us, our captors, for songs, our oppressors, for joy. Sing to us, they said, one of Zion's songs. O oh, let my tongue cleave to my mouth, if I remember you not. O oh, how could we sing the song of the Lord on alien soil? If I forget you, Jerusalem, let my right hand wither. O oh, let my tongue cleave to my mouth, if I remember you not. O oh, let my tongue cleave to my mouth, if I remember you not. If I prize not Jerusalem 
above all my joys. O oh, let my tongue cleave to my mouth, if I remember you not. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord is faithful in all his words and loving in all his deeds. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had come down from the mountain, large crowds followed him. A leper now came up and bowed low in front of him. Sir, he said, if you want to, you can cure me. Jesus stretched out his hand, touched him, and said, Of course I want to. Be cured. And his leprosy was cured at once. Then Jesus said to him, Mind you do not tell anyone, but go and show yourself to the priest, and make the offering prescribed by Moses as evidence for them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our first reading and psalm today describe one of the most significant events in the Old Testament, one of the most significant events in the history of God's chosen people. The year we can actually identify exactly, it's the year 586 BC, and the city of Jerusalem has finally been captured and destroyed by the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar. This is a historical fact this actually happened and we have records of it all over the Middle East from archaeological ru ruins. But it's a huge event, a huge significance in the life of the people. That's revealed by the psalm that we had today. I'm sure that you felt those words were very familiar. This is one of the laments of the people in exile. After they had been carried away from their city of Jerusalem, after the kingdom of Judah had been destroyed and emptied, they became slaves in Babylon. And it was there that they endured many decades of exile, a time of sadness, a time of loss, a time of tragedy. That's expressed in that famous psalm, which has inspired all sorts of other things through the ages. It's really interesting that the story of the Babylonian exile, this tragedy, falling on the people of Israel has been used throughout history to talk about other people facing tragedies, facing situations of injustice, failing, people feeling national disaster. It's interesting how that's been expressed in music. Just two examples. Giuseppe Verdi wrote an opera called Nabucco. Nabucco is the Italian for Nebuchadnezzar. It's the story, slightly fictionalised and romanticised, of this king of Babylon. But it shows this moment of the destruction of Jerusalem and the exile of the people of Israel. And it's there that the people of Israel sing a famous chorus, Va Pensiero, the chorus of the Hebrew slaves. Interesting that when Verdi wrote that, it was taken up as an anthem by Italian people living in a situation of hardship, of national disaster and tragedy. It became something of an anthem of liberation and of hope. Another example that perhaps is more familiar to other people, um, perhaps reflects different tastes in music, is the song By the Rivers of Babylon, uh, which was actually, it started off in Jamaica, but perhaps the most famous version of it is that by Boney M in this country. That too was a song about facing situations of injustice, of persecution. It used the story of the people of Israel to proclaim hope in an end to injustice, an end to unfairness, an end to tragedy and disaster. I'll put links to both of those people, pieces of music at the end of our mass video today, so perhaps you can have a little think about that. But that story of the Babylonian exile has inspired people throughout history when they face disaster, when they face everything going wrong. Now, obviously, that's on a national scale. But we heard another story of disaster, another story of things going wrong in our scriptures today. After the Sermon on the Mount, as Jesus comes down, he meets a man whose life has gone wrong, a man who has contracted leprosy. Now, 
If you know anything about the Bible, you'll know that leprosy was a disease that didn't just inflict physical harm on someone, it inflicted social harm. You were exiled from your family, from your friends, from your job, from your village. You had to go and live out in the middle of nowhere where you would not come into contact with anyone, a very extreme form of social distancing. And so this man in the Gospel story is living through his own captivity, his own exile, like the people of Israel. And I think what's so powerful is that Jesus, having preached the Sermon on the Mount, which is all about how we take the law of the Lord, we look deeply into it, and we apply it in our own lives, in our own actions. Jesus does exactly that. When the man says, if you want to, you can cure me, you can set me free from this exile, from this slavery, from this captivity. If you want to, you can set me free. And what does our God say in the person of Jesus? Of course I want to. There again we find hope. Hope that whatever the disaster, whatever the tragedy, whatever the injustice, whatever the, the despair, if we can turn to Jesus, if we can say, if you want to, you can help me. Jesus says, of course I want to. Now how he helps us, that's up to him. And sometimes we as human beings cannot understand the depths of God's mercy, the workings of God's plan. What we are called to do is to trust. During their time in exile, the people of Israel did not give up on God. They did not say, oh, God's abandoned us, it's all over, forget this religion nonsense, let's find something else. No, on the contrary, their exile strengthened their faith. It was during the Babylonian captivity that so many of the things that were there when the time of Jesus came, 500 years later, Actually, the synagogue, for instance, because the Jewish people could not worship in the temple in Jerusalem, that had been destroyed, they found a new form of Sabbath worship, worship in groups in the synagogue, which they then took back with them after the exile ended. Also, the books of scripture took on a new importance in exile. They were collected together for the first time. The Bible, as we know it, began to take shape during that captivity. So, even though they faced disaster, it actually strengthened the faith and hope of Israel. We should pray that when we face moments of difficulty, challenges, or even disaster, that we too can strengthen our faith and trust, that we can turn to the Lord, and that we too, by the rivers of Babylon, can trust that the Lord has not abandoned us, that he is with us, and he will lead us home. Now we think of our prayers for Mass today. And first, let us pray for all people facing tragedy, facing injustice or oppression. Let us pray that the example of the people of Israel in their captivity and the presence and power of our God may bring strength to all who suffer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for ourselves and all the members of our faith communities, that we too may be strengthened in our ongoing journey by the knowledge that Jesus wants to help and heal us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And for a moment in silence, let's think of our own prayers and intentions. Loving Father, hear our prayers. You never abandoned your people, even though they turned away from you. Be close to us now and always, so that we may be strengthened by the knowledge of your presence. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, this sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Saviour and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <laughs> the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. But with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The eyes of all look to you, Lord, and you give them their food, in due Let us pray. Spiritually renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be the sure pledge of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita Dulcedo, et spes nostra salve. A te clamamus, exules filii heve. A te suspiramus, gementes et flentes, in hac lacrimarum vale. Ea ergo, advocata nostra, illos tuos, misericordes oculos, ad nos converte. Et Jesum, benedictum fluctum ventris tui, nobis post hoc exilium ostende. O oh, Clemens, O oh, 